Hello, everyone. Welcome to part one of our APA workshop at the Harold L. Drimmer Library. In this video, we will discuss incorporating information from our sources into our papers using direct quotation and paraphrase. In part two, we will discuss in-text citations, which will be included with our quotes and paraphrased material in the body of our paper. In part three, we will cover the references page called a Works Cited page in MLA format, which will contain all the information about the sources we've cited. Before we get started, let us review what plagiarism is. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, it's using someone else's creative work without giving them credit through citation. You can see I've credited my source on the slide with a citation to that definition. While APA, American Psychological Association format, is used for writing papers for psychology classes and on occasion in some of the other social sciences, remember that whatever you're creating, whether it's a research paper, a web page, a film, a poem, a dance, you need to credit and acknowledge your sources of information and inspiration. The remainder of this presentation will concentrate on text sources for writing papers. But as a non-text example, on the left side of the screen is a painting by the artist Chris Foss titled Asteroid Hunters from 1971. And on the right side is a painting by Glenn Brown titled Ornamental Despair from 1994. Most of us would probably agree that Glenn Brown plagiarized Chris Foss's painting despite the brighter colors, additional details, and some other minor changes. Unsurprisingly, Chris Foss was a little upset, especially as Glenn Brown sold his painting for $5.7 million. Foss sued Brown and won, and now Brown's painting is titled Ornamental Despair, copied from Asteroid Hunters, 1971, by Chris Foss. If Glenn Brown had only asked permission or acknowledged his source, he could have saved himself a lot of trouble. While we are unlikely to get sued over our research papers, we can still get into quite a bit of trouble for not citing our sources properly, including getting an F on the paper or potentially failing the class. In order to avoid this, we need to first properly incorporate information into our papers. We do this in two ways, direct quotation and paraphrase, otherwise known as indirect quotation. There is some information that is so well known that it does not require citation, and that is referred to as common knowledge. We will examine each of these in turn and look at examples. Direct quotation refers to copying word for word or directly from the original source. You show your reader that these are not your own words by enclosing the text in quotation marks. You can think of the quoted words as, here is somebody else speaking in my paper, sort of like dialogue in a novel. Direct quotes should be used sparingly for passages that are especially impactful or that you simply cannot put into your own words. Your papers should not be filled with entire paragraphs of direct quotes. Along with our direct quotes, we will include an in-text citation, which is the focus of part two of our workshop. In the following example, the direct quote is the beginning of our sentence. Even smart, educated, emotionally stable adults believe superstitions that they recognize are not rational. The remainder of the sentence is paraphrased, that is, put into our own words. The reader knows this by seeing the first half of the sentence enclosed in quotation marks, while the remainder of the sentence is not. The text in quotes has been copied exactly the way we found it, word for word from the original source, which is cited in the in-text citation here in parentheses. This is called a parenthetical in-text citation. The citations have been made bold to make them stand out better on the examples. You should not do this in your paper. In our top example, you'll note that the in-text citation, 
within the parentheses is found right after the end of the direct quote. Here, it's in the middle of the sentence. In our bottom example, which is the same quote, the citation is at the end of the sentence, which may, may be more familiar if you know MLA format. For APA, you have the option to add the in-text citation right after the direct quote, wherever it is, or at the end of the sentence. As I've mentioned earlier, this direct quote is not a full sentence. You can quote a full sentence or a few sentences, a partial sentence, or just a few words that are unique to your author or field of study. The majority of your paper should be information that is paraphrased, which is also called indirect quotation. That means you've read it and have rephrased that information in your own words. As with direct quotes, you need to cite the source of the information. While these are your words, the information or ideas originally came from somebody else. So you need to give credit to the original author. This is probably the mistake seen most often. The citation acknowledges that you have found a credible authoritative source for that information. As an example, on the top of the screen is a long passage about retirement planning. On the bottom is paraphrased the gist of the section above. It gets to the main point of what the author was saying above in far fewer words. Although sometimes your paraphrase may be longer than the original material. It includes an in-text citation because we didn't know this until we read the article. So the author gets the credit even though these words are our own. It can be easier to paraphrase some material rather than others. Scientific and technical material may use terminology that cannot be referred to as something else. You should restructure the sentences if you can and rephrase any non-technical vocabulary. If you're having difficulty with quoting or paraphrase, you should make an appointment with the Writing Center for assistance. Common knowledge refers to information that is so well known and inarguable that it does not need a citation. There are seven days in a week. We can all agree on that. H2O is the chemical formula for water. We need to stop at a red light. We might not always do that, but we all know we should. If any of the above were the main subject of a paper, we'll want to include a citation. If I were writing a paper discussing motor vehicle violations, I would want to cite where in the New York statutes annotated, it says we must stop at a red light or risk getting a ticket. So depending on what you're writing about, you may need to put citations on things considered common knowledge. To wrap up part one of our APA workshop, we've incorporated information from our sources into our paper using direct quotation and paraphrase. Both direct quotations and paraphrase will include in-text citations, which is the subject of part two of our workshop. The in-text citation is just enough information to look up the source on the references page, which will contain all the information about the source so that anyone can find it. You may have completed annotated bibliographies in English class, which is an analysis and criticism of a single source. A bibliography is slightly different from a references page as it includes material not cited in the paper, but used when preparing the paper. For example, for our motor vehicle paper, a legal dictionary may have been used to make sure we understood all the terms read in our articles, but we never cited anything from it in our paper. Whatever cited in your paper should appear on your references page. Whatever is on the references page should be cited somewhere in your paper. In part two, we will discuss exactly what belongs in the in-text citation. While the concepts of quoting and paraphrase is the same for MLA and APA, the citation formats are quite different. 
If you have any questions about what we've covered in this video, please visit us at answers.sunywcc.edu to get help from me and the other librarians or to browse the library FAQs for additional help. You can also call or text us when the library is open. This is the end of part one of the APA workshop.